download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. Hey, how do you learn to hear the chord progressions within songs? You hear a song and you want to be able to play it. And some people can hear the chords being played, right? How do you learn to do that? Well, for me, it was an interesting process because I didn't, I had no tools. There was nobody who was able to tell me how I did that. So I just intuitively started, started to listen for the bass line. If I could hear the bass line, then maybe, you know, chances were that was the root the note of the chord, right? So if the, if the bass line goes... And you know, I was see, okay, E, G, D, maybe it was E minor, G major, uh, or D minor, whatever, right? Uh, and that helped me a lot. But you have to go into theory as well, because you have to be able to put together the puzzles. And each chord in a song is part of a puzzle. And the name of that puzzle is the scale that they all come from. Every single chord in a song comes from a scale. If they come from the C major scale, all the chords, which means that the C major scale has seven notes and all the, all the notes of the chords you hear are the same seven notes from that scale. That's the mother of the music, right? And if all the chords come from the C major scale, then you're in the key of C major. That's what that means, right? If all the chords come from the G minor scale, then you know that you're in the key of G minor. But that also gives you seven distinct chords in minor and major that you can then close, you can close off every other chord and say, okay, I got these seven chords now. I've established what key this song is in and whether it's major or minor, right? And that's pretty easy because it's always 99% of the time, the first chord you hear in the song, the first bass note is the root note of the key, right? So if you hear, you sing it, right? You stop the music. It's an E, right? That's how you do it. You sing it, sing the thing. Before you get confused by anything else that happens in the music, see if you can sing the note and then start right there. Find that and say, okay, maybe this is uh, maybe this is E minor. You always work by these theses in your head, right? And you know the theory. So you know that in the key of E minor, I got the key of, uh, I got the chord of E minor. That's the root chord. Then I got the second chord here. Uh, that's an F sharp. Uh, what is that? Uh, flat five uh, uh, chord, a half diminished chord. That's kind of a weird one. Then the third chord is a is a um, is a what is that? A, that's a G major chord, right? Then we got an A uh, major again. Uh, no, this is an A minor. I'm really I'm really slow here, uh, but I can do it, right? So even though you're slow on your theory, you still have that framework. So you got E, you got F sharp, you got a G, you got A. You got B and you got, and so on, right? And so you take this scale and say, what are the chords I have to work with? And then you try to say, okay, the next chord can be one out of six, right? If the chord goes to the first chord, that's E minor, right? Then there are only six left. And if the chord changes, then it can be only one out of six. And if you can play all those six chords, I see, okay, you sing the melody, for instance. I was standing on the bed array. Oh, that didn't sound right. Sound right, right? So suddenly you can start guessing because you only have six chords, right? And if you go to the next, the third chord in the song, you know that you, you either shift back to the first chord or one of the other five that are left, right? So if, if it's not the first, then you know it's not the second, and then you only have five chords to go for. And if you then can hear intensely, you just turn the bass up on your what a stereo or in your car, whatever, you know, your phone, listen intensely for it. Then you have another guide and say, okay, we go from an E to a D. Could it be a D then? Okay, what step is D in the E minor? E, D. It's the uh, it's the seventh step, right? It comes right before the E. So, and that's a major chord, right? So it could be a D major. Does that sound right? No, it didn't. Okay then what could it be, right? So you use a combination of your ear and theory in order for you to, to, to go into listening for the chords, where you limit the amount of stress you have to put on your ear, so you're, you're, it's easier to guess 
uh, what cult comes next. I hope this was uh, worth something to you. Uh, so point one, become very good at listening for the baseline because that note is most often, in many cases, the root note of the chord. So now you got at least the root note, right? Then it can be major or minor. And then you go into theory, knowing what chords are in the major scale and the minor scale, which is the same thing, right? So you need to focus on these things and then gradually you come become better and better at it. You of course have to actually, instead of going to the, the internet and, and looking for tabs, you simply just sit with it and just try to stubbornly see if you can listen for the chords, which is great ear training that you can use in other areas as well. When you're soloing and trying to find the right note in comparison to what is going on in the music, that kind of trying to analyze what is actually happening in a song when it comes to chords and bass line, that will give your ear that awareness of what is going on. So that's a very good exercise. And try with some very, very simple songs in the beginning. And don't give up. Use basic theory about scales, keys, and chords, or how they belong together, and then use your ear, listen for the bass line, and then try to piece the whole thing together on top of that. The more you do it, the better you become at it. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.